beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. I am very pleased to now be in a position to share with you a very special product, the Ramp Temperature Controller. This controller takes temperature control and the scope of features to a whole new level compared to offerings so far in the market from other companies. Covered in this overview is everything that you need to know about this device to consider purchase, as well as how to use it once you have, which includes some great tips direct from Kegland themselves. So let's get into it. So here is the Australia model which shows the final product very well. This is already available in Australia and New Zealand and is set for a release very soon in Europe and beyond naturally with the appropriate power inputs and outputs to suit each region. As you can see the inputs are colour coded for heating and cooling but you can run this just for heating or just for cooling only. Each of these power inputs can support up to 2400 watts, so hopefully already you can understand when I say that this will suit a wide variety of uses for home brewers, but also beyond that. This is helped further by the ability to control temperature from minus 20 Celsius and up to 120 Celsius. This is the equivalent of between minus 4 Fahrenheit to 248 Fahrenheit. Like all wrapped equipment, this enjoys the benefit of both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, and in a nutshell, this controller box will allow you to monitor and track temperature control, as well as apply it via separate heating and cooling devices, which can simply be set to as complex as you need profiles that can be pre-programmed easily via a smart device or a computer. At the back here you can see evidence of different mounting options that will even allow you to change the orientation of the cabling so that if you wish to you can mount this on top of a surface, but this can also be mounted to a hook or hanging point by unscrewing and reversing the bracket at the top that you see here. Clearly flexibility is king with a product like this. Let's now take a look at the different features baked into the control already, but know that much more is planned and coming into the future, as frankly the level of scope you have here is pretty enormous. Already you have features like being able to have a graph on the screen which can be displayed at different durations, which I'll show a little bit more later. Plus other features that include predefined temperature profiles, a separate hysteresis for cooling and heating, compressor cooldown, mode switch delay, two point temperature calibration, pillar algorithm heating, which is fully customizable, plus temperature alarms. Updates are made via Wi Fi, of course, and Kegland are constantly developing this platform to perfect new features and add new ones. Essentially, gone are the days when your temperature controller is pretty dumb. The BRAP profile is certainly very smart and brings new features to the table that have not been available to home brewers before. Part of this is also the ability to bond and pair different wrap devices together. So if for example the ideal pairing with this new wrap controller is the wrap pill, which is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled floating hydrometer that was released earlier this year and has been very popular due to its advantages compared to the other devices in the market and yet its very attractive price point. One core benefit this pairing of these two products gives is that you can go beyond set profiles and create reactive profiles for fermentation. One such simple example would be a fermentation that starts at a standard temperature like 18 degrees Celsius until your wrap pill finds a gravity of 10 points above the estimated final gravity. This then commands the wrap temperature controller to increase your temperature over 3 days to 21 degrees Celsius to ensure full attenuation. Once the wrap pill sees that your fermentation is over due to your FG being reached, it then commands the wrap temperature controller to reduce temperature for cold crashing. This can be set up so that you get the option to proceed with the next step via an acknowledged prompt, or fully automated as you wish. Naturally this can be set up with far more detail too if you like, so for example if you want to add a pause of some time before cold crashing after FG is reached, then it's simply a case of adding that in via a timer. Personally, I've never been very keen on static automated profiles for fermentation because frankly there is no margin for error, but a reactive profile like this is simply very smart and very much a big step forward not only in technology and design for home brewers, but also for those that do not have big budgets either. The cost of the wrap pill and temperature controller combined is less than some floating hydrometers on their own in some markets. Let's now look at the Wrapped Portal which is available online so as such can be accessed by anything that can access either an Apple or Android app or a web page. Firstly we have this snapshot view. If you wish you can adjust the temperature here on the fly remotely and you can see the current temperature and the target temperature at a glance. Now naturally you can do this just as easily with the controller in front of you but this route also allows you to do it from literally anywhere where you have a Wi-Fi or mobile internet connection. 
From here you also have full access to the controller options menu which is super handy especially if you are controlling your fermentation while away from home. You also have access to graphs as mentioned earlier that will display your fermentation data. I will show you this during an active fermentation shortly on the controller screen itself. There are various different types of wrap profiles that you can create and use for the different devices but focusing on the temperature controller here are some of mine that focus on temperature control. Kegland themselves also have supplied a good selection of profiles for different types of yeast and beer styles that you can download and use too that have great explanation notes. Using these supplied profiles from Kegland is naturally a great way to get started with no real fuss. Let's now run through how to create a profile yourself. This begins with selecting the profile type. Do not worry if you enter something here that you later wish to change as each profile is editable. Each step that you add into each profile can be specified in duration and temperature and given titles if you wish and there are also various options around how each step is applied too but I've kept this example simple. As you can see this one will maintain the temperature of 20 Celsius 14 days and the timer for this starts as soon as you start the step. This is a very easy to use portal that provides a lot of different options. You can create a totally free of charge account on the platform yourself by heading to the URL shown on screen now. I would suggest downloading some of the Kegland provided fermentation profiles and you will see how to add in pauses and other control methods that make this system so powerful and flexible. One thing is for sure though, it is very easy to use once you have spent a little time with it, which I believe is very important. Another feature that I really like while we are still on the topic is that once you have a new profile that we wish to use, you can then send it to the wrap device of your choosing for selection and use. This means that you can manage the profiles that you want in each wrap device according to their use, rather than having a large amount of profiles on all, which simply cows your selection and slows you down. It is fair to say that as you use wrapped and its connected devices you realise that there is also an awful lot of convenience baked in too, like this graph feature shown from the controller itself here. As you can see this was something that I filmed during the summer of this year during an active fermentation experiment that I was running at the time. The first view shown here is a 7 day view and as you can see this one has not got that far yet. Within the settings on the controller you can see that the graph zoom level can be up to 2 weeks on the controller's display or as low as 7 hours, but let's go for a 4 day view for this one. As you can see this splits the days into sections of time and you can see the curves and it takes this period of 4 days and hours rather than static days which is great. In case you are interested this was me testing a certain yeast type to see how it performed without cooling during humid ambient conditions. Having this overview of temperature curves within the controller was certainly very useful rather than having to consult with an app or website independently. I believe that one of the reasons why the wrap temperature controller has been so popular so far in the markets that it has been released in already is due to its multi-purpose nature. Not only is it useful for controlling fermentation temperature, but it can also be used for controlling temperature for other activities too, or simply for turning devices on and off. So the range of use is anything from brewing related into, for example, hydroponics. Back to beer though now, and this controller can be used as a control unit for brewing in a very similar way that it is used for the Brusilla Gen 4. The two units are essentially the same brain and board, they are just arranged differently. For example, this is ideal for those that wish to create their own brewing system or simply adapt an older one. All they would need to do is plug in or through an adaption wire in a heating element to the wrap temperature controller and add a thermal well within your vessel for the controller's temperature probe to sit in and then you will have a bang up to date control system with all the wrap features. This includes a great deal of different features include the ability to create profiles for preheating, mashing and general brewing. Let's not forget though that this also includes the ability to set and fully control a PID algorithm too, which I explained the setup of in this video shown on screen now. This feature on its own would be worth it to some people, as frankly Kegland are the only ones out there offering such a powerful level of user programming. Coming back now to the wrap temperature controller and its perfect pairing partner, the pill. Kegland have some tips that they are keen to share with the community to aid in the user experience, so let's now run through these. Firstly, even when using the pill, remember to ensure that the probe on the temperature controller is also attached to your fermenter, as it's designed to be a backup and the system works best if both probes are active when in fermentation. 
Also, as soon as you put your peel into your fermenter, you should start the profile on the RAP website. This will record the session and means that the fermentation session will be saved as a historical record, rather than just looking at all your data in one continuous graph. It also resets the ABV calculator so that you get the correct ABV show on the RAP portal, so it's also important for this reason. Do not start the profile before you put the pill into the fermenter either though, as this will cause issues too, as it takes the starting gravity when not yet in the fermenter leading to error. Then lastly, some pill users have been setting the Bluetooth telemetry far too long to save battery power. This is certainly not a good idea if you use the pill as the control temperature. For example, some users think they will set the pill to a 30 minute telemetry, but the issue is the fridge or heating device may stay on for 30 minutes and totally overshoot the desired set temperature. Also, if you have the default sensor timeout, which is set to 130 seconds, this means if the temperature controller doesn't see the pill for 130 seconds, it will automatically default back to the temperature probe, and then when it turns up 30 minutes later, it switches back to the Bluetooth probe. So it enters this loop of switching from each temperature probe source. Quite clearly, this is something that you wish to avoid. So here are my impressions so far. I've been using both of these devices mostly separately for quite some time now and really enjoy the features of both. Certainly you get less for more money elsewhere. The new wrap temperature controller is very flexible and yet cost effective enough that I would struggle to see why anyone would buy alternatives in the marketplace. At one time a common homebrewer's choice for temperature controllers would be Ingbird, based on quality versus price, but this has proven to be somewhat a rocky road when it comes to the longer term accuracy and reliability for many over time. Sadly this is not picked up in early reviews, so frankly this is one of the prime reasons why I'm simply sharing first impressions videos these days on products across the board rather than final reviews. This is also a first impressions video, but do keep in mind that Kegland are very quick to replace items that develop faults, and this fair and decent method of customer service is encouraged onto their distributors and supplied retailers too. This approach is sadly not commonplace within the homebrew market, and it should be a key area for your consideration too when choosing products. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!